got a Ph.D. doctorate in economics, international relations, and has advised uh, State Department, Pentagon, you name it. Been involved in a lot of um, operations around the world. And he's always proven on so many issues, energy policy, banking policy, geopolitical uh, operations, and breaking news and analysis that just continues to be incredibly accurate over the years. Dr. Jerome Corsi on short notice joins us. He also is one of the main writers and top researchers at WND.com. That's WorldNetDaily.com, which we now know has been declassified, released by the Clinton Library they tried to destroy when it was the Western Journalism Center and WND because they believed it might, quote, give the people the idea that they could have a choice in media. Well, I think that genie's out of the bottle now. Uh, Doc, I've been following your articles at WND, and I got to say, we don't have the staff to do it, but I remember a year ago, two years ago, you were on here exposing Odinga, and I went and pulled those articles back up, but, but you were on the show, getting all these hundreds of millions up to the Muslim Brotherhood. Now I talked to Colonel Schaefer, who met with the head of Egyptian intelligence, uh, and was also meeting with Capitol Hill yesterday, where he and other former top experts on Al-Qaeda, who fought Al-Qaeda. He headed up the anti-Al-Qaeda branch, wasn't allowed to kill bin Laden, as people know, uh, in Operation Able Danger and Stratus Ivy. And he said, undoubtedly, he said 95%. Well, he said it's classified, but it's way over 65. Then another source told me 95%, uh, similar source, that a bunch of people briefed Congress yesterday. He was coming out of Congress when he told me this, that they know 90 plus percent is Al-Qaeda. And that this is actually the arming of Al-Qaeda to overthrow Assad, basically. And that Assad's going to fight back. I don't know how Obama's going to try to spin all of this. And I don't know what the grand strategy could be. Take part of Iraq, take part of Syria, make an ISIS state. Saudi Arabia is involved. I mean, this is a very dangerous game. This has got to be ten times crazier than anything I've ever seen another administration do. Am I wrong in saying that? Because you were saying there was an Obama strategy... Well, from all your sources around the world, you've been to Kenya, been to Egypt, all these places, that he might be really doing a caliphate double cross and actually trying to turn the world over to radical Islam and Saudi Arabia. And I thought that might be too far because it was so bold. But now it really appears like he wants cover for letting this group under the name ISIS take over Africa, the Middle East, uh, you name it. And then I guess let them attack us and take our liberties. I mean, what is the grand strategy here, Dr. Jerome Corsi? Well, I, I think uh, Alex, you, you're on to the right track. I mean, first of all, you've got to start with the Muslim Brotherhood and the fact that uh, Obama, through the Arab Spring, really supported the, the destabilization of the Middle East, toppling Gaddafi, toppling Mubarak in Egypt, uh, and knowing. I mean, I was writing at the time that. The Muslim Brotherhood would take over, which they did. And the Muslim Brotherhood, remember, the fundamental here is Sunni Shiite. Muslim Brotherhood is Sunni, as is Saudi Arabia and Qatar or Qatar or however you want to say it, Sunni. And Obama is backing and has backed the rebels fighting Assad, who are also Sunni. And in fact, those rebels fighting Assad are really interchangeable with ISIS, and they're interchangeable with the Muslim Brotherhood. And well, that's what he said. He said clearly the Muslim Brotherhood is the front for Al Qaeda. They've yeah. just changed their name to ISIS to Correct. confuse everybody because it's making Obama look bad to be aiding them. It, and in fact, it's the same uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, Al Qaeda, ISIS. These are all forms of the same group. It's Sunni. It's going against Assad, wants to establish with the funding of Saudi Arabia and Qatar, wants to establish a caliphate, a Sunni caliphate, very much like the Ottoman Empire going back you know, centuries. This is what the goal is. And the ultimate enemy here is, first of all, Assad, because he's a friend of uh, Iran, and Iran is a Shiite. And this is a Shiite-Sunni battle in which Obama has been trying since the Arab Spring to have the United States side with the 
Saudis with the Sunnis to defeat the Shiites and establish this caliphate in uh, Iraq and Syria, and ultimately the entire Middle East and the entire world. I mean, that's the, that's the game plan here. And uh, the lukewarm efforts to say we're going to do a little bit of bombing, which, you know, have very minimal chance of success against a group like ISIS, the way it's operating, well-funded Iraq oil money. We've now pulled out of Iraq in a way that, again, was against the advice of George W. Bush at the inappropriate time when essentially there is no army in Iraq that we could arm to fight against ISIS. And every military authority of any credibility or knowledge in the world understands that. Well, the, the intel we've got is this is just some light bombing of a few little straggling groups, a few trucks, a few cars for PR. So Obama can then give hundreds of millions, if not billions, which the Republican leadership is green lighting under Boehner today, directly to the so-called good rebels to overthrow Assad. So this is really taking right. public sentiment to take out IS or Al Qaeda or ISIL, as Obama calls it, take the, that support to go after these horrible people and then go ahead and use it to destabilize and overthrow Assad. The Russians are going to see through that. Assad's going to see through that. What are, what's going to happen if Assad shoots at our aircraft when they're flying over? This is really getting crazy. Also, let's make it really clear to everybody that we're funding ISIS through the back door. In other words, supporting the Syrian rebels against Assad is supporting ISIS. And this goes back to the same thing we were doing with Christopher Steve, with you know Ambassador Stevens in uh, in Libya when he first, even before Gaddafi was toppled, came in uh, uh, to Benghazi in a cargo ship and began a CIA operation of funding and providing arms to the rebels opposing Gaddafi were the same Muslim Brotherhood groups that opposed Mubarak in Egypt and are now behind ISIS. In, uh, in, in Iraq and Syria. And Turkey's involved in this as well because Chris Stevens, even the night he died, was having meetings with one of the Turkey ambassadors, Turkish ambassadors. And I'm convinced, as you know, we just published a book by Aaron Klein that the entire background of the Benghazi situation was a fast and furious operation that the Obama administration was running in the Middle East to provide arms to this. Syrian rebel army, which in effect is ISIS, and it was opposing Assad, and it was sure. opposing Iran. Well, the BBC had live feeds of them going into Tripoli and other areas when Gaddafi collapsed, waving flags and with signs in English saying, Syria's next. And now they're in Syria, they said Iraq's next, and then the next they say Europe and the U.S. is next. And never forget that Obama was raised a Sunni Muslim in Indonesia. He was raised a Sunni. That's what his stepfather so was. So what's the real intel? Was that a deep cover CIA deal with his mom? We know she was. Or is he really think he's the Grand Mahdi? And is there some kind of deal behind the scenes? Because I always thought that theory I've been hearing for eight years was crazy since the start of his election. But now, I mean, my gosh, if that's not what's going on, it's a triple cross then at some level. Because you got his cousin through him arming the Muslim Brotherhood to overthrow Egypt. You've right. got You've got just... And you, he, he looked so emotional when he was up there talking last night about Muslims and stuff. I, I mean, if, if this is true, this is the ultimate double cross. Remember his brother in Kenya is, you know, was accused by the Egyptian government of managing money for the Muslim Brotherhood. And that's, again, ties back to the Obama family. And I've said for the very... Well, wasn't it Odinga, too? And Odinga, too. I mean, Odinga was involved in this as well. You know, you had the entire... Network. Remember Odinga going back to Gaddafi. These were all, you know, Sunnis. But it's a, it's the radical Sunnis, the Muslim Brotherhood, the ISIS, the Al Qaeda faction that Obama has really indirectly and under the table backed. That's that's the underlying story here. And that. And what's the grand plan? Well, the grand plan is ultimately that Sunni Islam triumphs worldwide. And defeats every other religion. That's been the plan since the time of, you know, since the Prophet Muhammad died and the fight began between the Sunnis and the Shiites. Why has Israel been going along with this? Because they got a deal with Saudi Arabia? Well, Israel in the moment is really just surviving. It's got so many enemies and so many different fronts 
that for the for the moment, you know, the the real enemy is Hamas, and it's being funded by um, Iran, and again, the Muslim Brotherhood is behind Hamas. So, in a sense, the Sunnis and the ISIS divert some of the attention away from Israel, but at the same time, these are all extremely dangerous. You know, it, it, there's no way to make a deal with any of these forces. There's no good forces here. It's just understanding the conflict, understanding that Obama sides with the radical Sunnis. Because as a, I've always said two things about Obama, his background looks like a CIA plant. And he said himself in Cairo, he's experienced Islam on three continents. Obama was raised a Sunni, was raised a radical revolutionary Sunni which is the ideology of the United States is the, you know, the grand devil, the imperialist nation. And Obama has had this agenda, I've said it from the very beginning, to advance the cause of radical Sunni Islam, as exemplified by the Muslim Brotherhood, ISIS, and ultimately Al-Qaeda. And we've largely pulled out now, such that this bombing that we're going to do is really um, you know, pointless. If we really wanted to go after ISIS, when they were running through Iraq in columns on open desert roads, ISIS could have been easily uh, devastated with 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 serious attacks, not just one sortie. Oh, but they were given the weapons up front and allowed in to regroup and then give the pretext to go bomb them in Syria in a way of defeating them, but it's really going to be Assad. How is Obama going to try to flip this around then and start bombing Assad targets? Or will they use the so-called money to the non-radical rebels that'll really go towards fighting Assad on well, the ground? As soon as you get an incident, as soon as we have a flyover that is attacked, remember, Obama's already tried this once. He accused Assad of using chemical weapons. This was a year ago. Obama was ramping up to attack Assad and support the the Syrian uh, you know rebels a year ago, and when we all exposed it that in fact it was the rebels who were using the chemical weapons. It wasn't Assad. We embarrassed the Obama. And it's not that we're for Assad. We just go tell the truth. Truth, just the truth. I mean, the the truth is, we the United States is the origin of ISIS. And knowledgeably with the Saudis and Qatar, who we still continue to work with, both knowing that ISIS was being funded, we provide, we armed ISIS, not only with the weapons through Christopher Stevens and the CIA, but ISIS is operating now with all the military equipment that the United States provided at the Iraqi army. Where do you expect this to go now? I mean, can the political establishment get away with this? I just think you're going to either have a continuing, you know, Obama's now gone out and given the speech last night, and he's told the American people he's going to you know, go after ISIS. His strategy, all it's going to take is one more beheading by, uh, by ISIS. Um, and anyone who thinks that ISIS is going to be deterred for public relations reasons doesn't understand ISIS. They want to terrorize the world. They have every intention of continuing the beheadings. They'll do acts of terror if they can get away with it. Uh, they are going to do everything they can to provoke a, a, you know, a fighting gun. And what is Obama going to do when ISIS or ISIS sympathizers blow up a sports stadium when he had the border wide open? How are they going to get away with that? They're not. This whole strategy is uh, Obama is rapidly losing control of the entire strategy. Just like I said, when, you know, the Arab Spring, we were bound to lose control. We did. But look at now, where you've got a, a military government in Egypt. Obama did not back the military government. He has not come clean with the number of Muslim Brotherhood that have been criminally prosecuted in Egypt. We were withdrawing our aid from Egypt at a time when Russia was moving in and supporting Egypt. We're creating a vacuum here for Russia to move in and to be much more detrimental in their activity in the Middle East. But we, we're, the United States right now is operating in a confused state where uh, Obama is asking us to back the rebels who are in fact part of ISIS. So we're attacking ISIS while we're supporting ISIS. And that's not going to work. That makes my head hurt. It does. It's very confusing. But remember, it's very simple. If you, if you go back and say Sunni versus Shiite, and what we're doing is ISIS 
and the rebels fighting Assad are both Sunni. And again, if the Shiites were on the offensive, I would be against them. Clearly, the Shiites are not on the offensive right now. It's the Sunnis, just like it's the Sunnis on the offensive against Russia. And Russia, if it keeps getting pushed, this is what Colonel Schaefer said yesterday, is going to start moving in with their anti-tank aircraft and more troops uh, into Syria. They are not going to let Assad fall and lose their only Mediterranean port. And none of these forces in the Middle East right now are, there's no good guys in this mix. Because the, the Shiites over in Iran have completely made a fool out of John Kerry in Geneva. And they are with abandon proceeding to develop nuclear weapons. We're doing nothing to stop them. And that's happening under the radar while we're all worried about- This ISIS. sounds like the, the foreign policy the devil would come up with. It certainly does. I mean, it is complete chaos. And as soon as Obama went in and toppled Gaddafi and Mubarak, he toppled two of the forces, bad guys though they were, they were holding stable regimes. Now that they're gone, Libya is dominated by Al Qaeda. It sent the message for Al Qaeda to green light taking over everything. Absolutely. And to do so under a whole variety of different names. You know, they're not just all calling themselves Al Qaeda anymore, but they are all operating in unison. They, they all got black Wahhabis, radical Islam, uh, Sunni flags, and it's all. And, and now they're one upping each other on who can be the most radical. And I'm seeing a lot of young trendies. I said this first a few months ago, but but now even Voice of America said it yesterday that that there's the cool factor in ISIS, and it makes me want to throw up. It's the new uniform, it's the new cool, the black flag with the white circle. I mean, this is the new cool. And so they're it's all- It's like the new Che Guevara, one of my crew said. Yeah, or it's you know a new baseball uniform. They're all running out, this is the uniform they all wanna play under. But you know that'll change too. I mean, once the caliphate is established, see here you've also got the destruction of, of Iraq and Syria as nation states, that's done with. You know, there is no nation state in Iraq. There is nothing. There's just one giant Islamic state run by crazy people. And civil war going on. Sunni versus Shiite, all bad guys. And we are supporting the bad guys in the process. And of so there's the strategy, um, balkanization, deindustrialization, and then use the new Muslim threat, the radical Muslim threat, to take over the West with a police state. We'll be right back. Well, Dr. Corsi of WorldNetDaily.com, thank you for joining us on 9-11. Uh, undoubtedly, these terror groups are not run by the West. I liken it to dumping black widows in your neighbor's bed. Uh, you know, you, you don't command the black widows. You just put them in the way of your neighbor. Undoubtedly, there will be blowback. We will get attacked. And I don't see how the governing class won't end up going to prison when our borders are open and they funded this group. I'm going to make sure, you're going to make sure that if there is a terror attack, that the people involved are brought to justice because our government is aiding and abetting. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. And also, remember, the agenda here is eliminating Christians from the Middle East. Every one of these countries, going from Libya across uh, through now into Syria and Iraq. Egypt, all of them. Egypt, the, the war on eliminating Christians from the Middle East is one point on which the Sunnis and the Shiites agree. And that's gonna continue the beheadings, the killings, the wiping out of populations by ISIS. It's gonna accelerate. And I don't think the bombing is gonna do any good to, uh, Obama's gonna be given a chance by the American public. But when this fails to stop ISIS, Obama's got to explain whose side he's on. That's why he's already saying it'll take years. Right, well, American public doesn't have years, not when the threat is about to cross the southern border, not about when we're on 9-11 and should be remembering how easily and vulnerable the United States is to attack, how many ISIS members fighting today in Iraq and Syria with ISIS came from the United States, were recruited from here with other sympathizers still in the But United Obama said they're not Islamic. Right, they're not Islamic. Yeah, well, you know, what are they supposed to be? I mean, it was a ridiculous statement. Of it's course. political correctness has become a total joke. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend coming up, sir. Thank you. All right.